house this morning. Amen. 286, the glory land way. I'm glad I'm saved today. And I'm glad the Lord's with his people. Amen. Let's all stand and sing. And we're going to worship him today. Amen. Give me that chord there. Let's go. I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. I'm in the glory land way. Telling the world that Jesus saves the day. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is near and the way grew up clear. I'm in the glory land way. Listen to the call, the gospel call today. Get in the glory land way. Wonders come home, oh, hasten to obey. Get in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is near and the way grow up clear. I'm in the glory land way. Onward I go rejoicing in his love. I'm in the glory land way. Soon I shall see him in that home above. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is near and the way grow up clear. I'm in the glory land way. Reach around, shake hands with your neighbor today. Let somebody know you're glad to see them in the Lord's house. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Oh, let somebody know you're glad to see them. Bring the keyboard up in the house, Justin. Bring the keyboard up in the house. In the house. Yeah, in the house. I can't hear it at all. Bring it up just a tad. Onward I go rejoicing in his love. I'm in the glory land way. Soon I shall see him in that home above. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is near and the way grow up clear. I'm in the glory land way. Put one time. Onward I go rejoicing in his love. I'm in the glory land way. Soon I shall see him in that home above. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is near and the way grow up 
was clear. I'm in the glory land way. Yes, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is near and the way grew up clear. I'm in the glory land way. Amen. Well, we're glad to see you in the Lord's house this morning. I want us to all come. We're going to gather around the altar this morning, have a season of prayer. Everybody that will, we're going to come gather around the altar today and ask the Lord to help us. And uh, I'm glad the Lord's able to help and do just exactly what needs to be done in every heart and in every life. We're glad you're here today. And uh, good to see Byron here today. I didn't recognize him. That short haircut. He uh, just got through, uh, graduated, isn't that right? And uh, basic training in the Coast Guard, right? And uh, do you know where you'll be sent to yet? Don't know, or do you know? You'll be going to Michigan. Amen. Well, let's pray for him. He'll be up there with all them other Yankees. Amen. Amen. We need to pray for him, don't we, David? Amen. And uh, so let's pray for Byron. Amen. Amen. We, we, I tell you what, we've sat around and we've watched these children grow up. And me and Karen walked in the other day to Porky's and Jaden was cleaning off a table. And I turned around and looked up to him. They've all got bigger than I am. I ran in yesterday to to, uh, to Blake and um, and uh, run into him over at Winks when uh, Brother, uh, I forgot, Leanne and Brother Toby, their 25th wedding anniversary. And I uh, run into Blake and uh, six foot two. I, 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 I remember when he was a little boy. I tell you what, God's been good to this church. Somebody say amen. When you look around and see how good the Lord is and how gracious he is and, and where we would all be today without him, I mean, we'd really, we'd really be in a mess. Brother Ned, yeah, let's continue to pray for Brother Terry. Anybody? Now, my youngest son today is in the hospital in Northeast, and we ask you to pray for him. We think he's going to be fine. Uh, he had a breakdown of some tissue in his lower abdomen and his stomach area, released a toxin into his system, and they're trying to flush all of that out. And, uh, and of course, that's where my wife is this morning with him, and hopefully he'll be there a day or so, and he'll be to the house. And, uh, of course, you pray for him, and uh, I know the Lord's able to do just exactly what needs to be done. I was sitting there at my desk this morning. How many know the devil tells you all kind of things? Amen. The devil will tell you all kind of things. You don't need to go to church. You don't need to serve God. You don't need to live for God. But I'm going to tell you, there ain't nothing no more important than being in the house of God. And there's nothing the devil fights any harder than for you to be in the house of God. Amen. I told Allie June yesterday, I said, I'll see you at church tomorrow. She said, I ain't going to church tomorrow. I'm going somewhere else Sunday. I didn't even see her. I was going to aggravate her. But see, kids, see, that's just a kid. But the thing about it is we're grown folk, and we sometimes we get that way on the Lord. Now, Lord, don't, don't upset me, Lord. <laughs> uh, but, uh, amen, Miss Faye, I, got to, I had to rebuke her this morning. Somebody need rebuking, amen. But uh, anybody else have a prayer request this morning? Prayer request, something on your heart. We need to pray. One for the other. Maybe by an uplifted hand today. Maybe a need. Good to see Ken just come in. He's been in the hospital all week. I'm glad he's here today. Give the Lord a good hand. Amen. I'm glad he's here today. And continue to pray for Brother Joey and so many, so many, so many people in our church uh, that we love and they're sick and have needs. Where'd Brother Kelly go? Uh, come here and pray for us, brother. And uh, we need to pray one for the other. And uh, just ask the Lord to have his way. Dear Lord, we come to you this morning at a quiet hour. We pray that your touch will be upon this church. Your touch will be upon each member. We thank you for all the blessings of life. We thank you for how you've kept all of our children safe. How you 
with a hedge of protection around each one of us. The small things that we don't even know, we want to thank you for what you've done. You know our needs. You know our cares before we even ask. Thank you for being such an awesome God. Pray for Preacher Zach this morning, dear God, that he would deliver the word straight from you, dear God, that we need to hear. All these things we ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let somebody know you love them this morning. Uh, you can't improve on him. Amen. Uh, you can't improve on him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise team, y'all come help me this morning. Amen. Amen. Oh, you can't improve on the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise team singers, y'all come help me this morning, would you? Amen. Can't improve on the Lord. Oh, if he don't help you, there'll be no help. If he don't touch you, there'll be no touch. Oh, but how we need him. How we need his love. How we need his grace. How we need his mercy. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to change gears. Give me a, give me a F and let me see if this is right. I think I'm getting keyed. Go back up. Will I claim the blood Jesus shed on Calvary? Those precious blood stains were made there just for me. For all my sin, my sickness, and my pain. When I need healing, I claim those precious blood stains. Let's sing it again. Sing it now. Will I claim the blood? Jesus shed on Calvary. Those precious blood stains were made there just for me. For all my sin, my sickness, and my precious blood stains well I have a source of strength when I am weak and it takes me through when this life is pressing me and I have a source of power from above. I'm covered over by a shield of love. Sing it now. Will I claim the blood? Jesus shed on Calvary. Those precious blood stains were made there just for me. For all my sin, my sickness, and my pain. blood stains I do not know how others make it 
through who never go to Calvary as I do for there's a healing cleansing stream that flows boy I'm glad of that today with peace that only his redeemed can know. And I claim the blood Jesus shed on Calvary. Those precious blood stains were made there just for me, for all my sin, my sickness and my pain. When I need healing, I claim those precious blood stains. Come on, hit me, sing it now. I claim the blood Jesus shed on Calvary. Those precious blood stains were made there just for me, for all my sin, my sickness. And my pain when I need healing, I claim those precious blood stains for all my sin, my sickness, and my pain. When Those precious blood stains. Amen. Thank you, folks. I'm going to ask Brother Arthur if he'll come sing us a verse of a song this morning. Come sing us a song, Brother Arthur. Now, Brother Arthur and Miss Jackie here in the next little while, whenever they, they're getting ready to move to Arizona, he's fixed to go west, young man. And uh, so before he goes west and we've got him east, I'm going to get him to sing us a verse of a song. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Just put this mic on that boom. You have to go to the keyboard where Derek's at, Brother Arthur. Help him, Brother Allen. Amen. No pushing, brother. <laughs> Amen. 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 Come right over here, brother. It's all over me today. Maybe that's the greatest feeling you ever have in your body is the Holy Ghost. When it runs down your legs, you're coming up. I don't know where you're going, but you're coming up. God don't make no quitters. We're all alive and doing well. And I'm glad to be headed to my upper chamber. Hallelujah, Brother Zach. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to God. I love the Lord. I don't care who knows it. Yeah, Praise the Lord. Go ahead, Brother Y'all pray for me. I know I ain't forgot how to sing.
No, I don't need no microphone. I just need the See, that's the advantage of not playing on the old standard keyboard. I don't watch where my hand goes. You don't watch it on this and you'll be hit three or four notes. things together up here directly. Y'all just had a bear with me. This pedal done went three foot above my foot. I'm going to have to get a rubber band to put around that thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ain't y'all proud to be in church? The preacher told me one day as I saw his crowd, he ever looked at his life, I said, nobody wants to smile. I like to be happy, brother. Sam. Amen, right. I like for it to get around my body and move my legs. Because it ain't going to be long before I'll be gone. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Someone 
to care. Yes, someone to share all my troubles like no other can do. He'll come down from those skies, brush away tears from my eyes, call you his child. He's gonna care for you. Oh, someone, sing it, y'all, to care. Someone. To share <laughs> all your troubles like no other can do. He'll come down from those skies. He'll brush those tears from your eyes. Cause you're his child. He's gonna care. Oh, you. Oh, someone to care. Oh, someone to share all your troubles like no other can do. He'll come down. From those skies, brush those tears from your eyes, cause you're his child, he's gonna care for you. Amen. You can't improve on that, can you? Amen. 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 Don't let him fall. Yeah, Brother Ned, help him. Amen. Do you enjoy that? Give Brother Arthur a good hand. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. I'm glad the Lord's able. Give me a, give me a G chord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. See, all them keys on that piano, you can change them around if you know how to hit the right ones. Amen. Amen. I'll get the right chord. Go to F. Oh, uh, yes. How many knows the Lord knows the way? No matter where you go or no matter what you do, how many knows that Jesus knows the way? Look at your neighbor and say, Jesus knows the way. Amen. In shady green pastures, so rich and so sweet, God leads his dear children Along where no tempters can sell you and cause you no fear, God leads his dear children along and some through. blood some through great sorrow but my God gives me a song in the night season and all the day long 
well away from the mire and away from the clay. God leads his dear children along. Here's the part I'm looking for, brother Arthur. And someday up in glory in eternity's day God leads his dear children along well some through the water and some through the flood some through Some through great sorrow, but my God gives a song in the night season and all the day long. You ever heard that song? You're hearing it now. Some through the fire and some through. The flood. See, you don't know what you'll face till it's over. Some through the fire, but we'll all go through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song in the night season. And all the day long, well, it's in that night season, and all the day long. That's where you find the Lord, eh? Thank you, fellas. I appreciate it. You can be seated. I want to read you a verse of Scripture today. You know, so many times in our life we need encouragement. So many times in our life we need uh, direction. But I'm going to tell you every once in a while we need correction. Amen? I woke up this morning, and the Lord's been dealing with me for two or three days. And how many know sometimes if you're going to grow, you've got to be pruned. Look at your neighbor and say, ouch, I feel it coming. You see, we have to understand in our life that anything that grows up, my friend, John said it like this. He said, I must decrease and he must increase. Amen. Sometimes in our life, we get to feeling too big about ourselves. We get to feeling too high about ourselves. We get to, uh, and the Lord began to deal with me about this thing. And I want you to turn in your Bible to Matthew 16, and I want to read a verse today, verse number 24. And I just want to talk to us this morning just for a few moments on the subject, the high price to be a Christian, the high price of Christianity. It's going to cost you something to be a Christian. It's going to cost you something to live for God. Look at your neighbor and say, Christianity is not easy all the time. It's not easy all the time. There's sometimes you want to get 10 mile deep in the pine thicket and cuss, but you can't do that. Somebody say amen. Look at your neighbor and say, don't do it. Because you may think nobody's listening, but did you know there'll be somebody listening? Amen. There'll be somebody listening. There'll be somebody there. And my friend, we live in a day at this time and this hour that everybody wants a handout. Everybody wants an entitlement. Everybody wants convenience. I was talking to a gentleman the other day that somebody say amen. He said, I make my money at the drive through window. I, I'm not interested in people coming in and sitting down. If they do, that's fine, but that's not where I make my money. I want them in and I want them out and next customer. Somebody say amen. Well, that's the way we want everything done in our life. We want it easy. We want it accessible. We want it in a hurry. How many people in here are impatient? Have we got anybody impatient? 
you'll have to wait for me to get done to hear all. I don't drink instant coffee, but I refuse to eat an instant potato. Amen. It may not come from Idaho, but it things easy. Is that not right? We want everything to go easy. How many of you have went seven days this week? Can I just get, how many of you folk have lived every day this week and every hour of this week and everything's just been wonderful? If it is, I'd like to go to work for you. Because where I am, man, in spite of the circumstance, in spite of what's wrong, oh, the devil told me this morning uh, because the Lord gave me a promise when he was a baby that he's going to be fine. Right? Ask somebody or to say amen. And I'm telling you, bless God, he's been with us. But if you find there's some cutting and you have to die if he's going to live in you. Amen. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If you will come after me, Bible. Now, if it don't read like this in your Bible, you got the wrong one. You'll have to go to Calvary too. For whoever will save his life, not obtain it by the work of the flesh. You cannot obtain it by an education. That is the short and the long of it. Somebody say amen. Now, this high price of Christianity. Me and you were saved that it didn't cost us anything in that redemptive act other than by faith. We said, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. Come into my heart and save me, and he saved us. Is that not right? He saved us. Can I say that again? He saved us. Not that we saved ourselves, but he saved us. And he keeps us, and he blesses us, and he's good to us. Now, that didn't cost us anything for that particular moment, but it cost heaven something. It cost the very darling Lamb of God. It cost the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. It cost the very life of the Lord Jesus Christ. So salvation's not free. There's a high price of Christianity. It's free for me and you, but it wasn't free for Christ or God. He paid the eternal payment for our sin, past, present, and future. Somebody say amen. So I want to give you three things today hurriedly and say this. This high price of Christianity, number one, there is a cross to remember. Jesus said this in these verses of Scripture. He said this, take up what? His cross and follow me. Now, Christ died on the cross, and if you live for God, you're going to have to die on the cross, and you're going to have to realize that there'll be some things in life you'll have to endure. Now, some folk won't come to, I'm just being honest with you, they won't come to church if they had a hangnail yesterday. Somebody can cut them off in traffic on the way to church and they take that as a sign from God to go to the racetrack instead of the house of God. Amen. I never have understood this. My friend, Jesus told them plain, boys, I am going to die. In the verses prior to this, he explained to them that he was going to go to Calvary. He was going to be criticized. He was going to be ridiculed. He was going to be spat upon. He was going to be beaten. He was going to be mistreated. Uh, and he was going to go to Calvary and die. And then he invited them along for the journey. And then he wound it all up by saying this, no man can save his life unless he loses it. <laughs> he said, I'm going to be mistreated by the world. Come and join me and get the hell beat out of you too. That's what he's trying to say. They're going to cuss me. They're going to hate me. They're going to despise me. They're going to lie on me. But if you want to be like me, is anybody here but me? I knew a lot of you had a weak spine. You wasn't going to take much of what I was going to say this morning. 
But I'm telling you, honey, if you're going to be like Jesus, uh, my friend, you're going to have to be willing to take a licking and keep on a ticket. When the world criticizes you and when the devil says quit and when the religious world says God can't, you need to get up with a backbone like a saw log and quit whining around like a Casper Toast, a three-year-old, and say, bless God, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. The devil's not going to stop me. Amen. Preacher called me this week, said I got two deacons wanting to run me off. I said, get in the pulpit and tell them to hit the door. You're staying. Amen. Well, what will happen if I do that? I said, either you'll leave or they will won, but somebody's got to have some relief. Somebody say amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. <laughs> That's what the Bible said. Oh, the Bible said in the word of the Lord right here in this scripture, he said, boys, they're going to crucify you before it's over. And you know what they said? Whew, that's a hard saying. You know, I hadn't been there long, I guess, I don't know, six, eight months. And Big Mike Johnson called me from Georgia. He was pastor there then, and I'd come here, and he took the church, and he called me, and he said, Preacher, I want to apologize to you. I said, well, Big Mike, me and you ain't never had a crossword. He said, no, but I thought it a lot of times. I thought to myself, if I was a pastor, this is what I'd do. If I was a pastor, this is what I'd do. He said, I've been the pastor here six months, and I'm about ready to quit. He said, these people don't want to do right. And I said, well, I'm going to tell you something. Their pastor don't want to do right either. They're following their example. Now, how can we as God's men expect the church to live right when we don't live right? When the pastor's not honest when the pastor don't have a good moral character, when the pastor don't go the extra mile, when the pastor don't give and work, and I don't care what's going on, whether you're cleaning out a gutter or changing a light bulb, I know there may be a time I may not be able to drive a nail, but bless God, I'm going to hold the ladder and tell you how to do it, amen. I, I'm going to tell you how to do it, amen, because amen, somebody say amen. But my friend, I believe, my friend, if God's put in your heart, you ought to be the example about how you'll live for God. That's right. There's a price to pay. And there's a lot of folk think they know how to pay the price, but they can't pay it. John Mark thought he could pay it. He, he couldn't pay it. The pressure of the world got him. <laughs> These other folk give up. Hey, I'm telling you today, if you expect to do anything for God, you cannot lose sight of remembering there is a cross. Amen. I love all of my singers and all my praise team people, but I don't know if any of them's right with God or not. I don't really know. Coming here this morning, they've griped and fussed and belly ached and growled at each other. And then won't get up and sing and act like, and part of them's in the back mad, and some of them's here mad, and some of them's over there mad. Every one of you ought to just get up where you at right now. Come get in this altar and say, Lord, forgive me. Every one of you. I wouldn't wait for the end of the service. You say, I wouldn't believe you was going to say that. I can't take no more. Ask leadership when you admit you're wrong. You start to come get in the altar and say, Lord, I'm short-sighted. I'm immature. I didn't rock right. There ought to be some more of you up here too, bless God, the way you, you acted this morning. Wearing the pole preacher to death. Supposed to be helping me. You're down here trying to hurt me. But you don't mean to. You're just in the flesh. That's right. That's right. So I wouldn't ever believe you to say that. That's the reason I'm pastor and you ain't. I'm doing well, Brother Toby. I'm doing. God told me what was going to happen before I ever got here this morning. He told me. 
God told me what's going to happen, Brother Kelly, before I ever got here. He did, Wes. I could have told you last night what's going to happen. Flesh. You know what flesh wants? Flesh wants its own way. Flesh wants to be glorified. Flesh wants to be lifted up. You say, preacher, if you used to call my name like that, I'd go home. I'm, I, I, I may do it in a minute. I'm right before calling two or three more. Hey, Amen. You say, I ain't mad at none of you. But I'm just saying, Brother Kelly, we got to realize there's a price to pay if we're going to live for God. Hey, Amen. We got folks sitting right here in this building ain't been saved three weeks or six months. And we deserve to show them how a man of God and a woman of God ought to act. That right? If you got a cross feeling against anybody in this building, now listen to me. I hope, I hope if you leave here today with a hard feeling in your heart, I hope your car blows up before you get to the highway. I hope a piston blows plumb through the side and Ricky Halcombe will make $10,000 next week on your rebellion against God. Ricky needs the money. He loves his preacher and supports me. Amen. Amen. But I'm telling you, we can't have that kind of attitude. We got to be willing to deny ourselves. Amen. These other folk today, I love you and I appreciate you. But my friend, you got to get in there where God's at. Hey Amen. Am I preaching right this morning? Am I preaching wrong? That's my oldest boy, and he's as wrong as the rest of them. Are you listening to me? Judgment begins at the house of God. Now, what I'm telling you, my friend, there's a cross to remember, and then there is a consideration to rebuke. You know, see, what we have to think about this thing in our life. You say, preacher, I'm shocked. Why, you ought not be. You're just like this month. Say, if you didn't act up on Sunday, you acted up in other six days. Hey, Amen. How many know what I'm talking about? You ain't acted right every day this week, have you? And I ain't either. Have, have all of us acted right every day this week? I ain't going to cast no, and I know you ain't acted right, bless God. Man, none of us acted right, have we, Wes? We don't act right. We don't do right. We don't live like we're going to heaven. We live like we're going to hell. That's right. And I'm telling you, there's a price to pay. All these folk know I love them. They're my right hands. Hey, but listen, I don't call it for them, and I'm not going to call it for you. What I'm telling you, you got to consider the price. You got to, you got to consider him. If Jesus went all the way to Calvary, then we got to be willing to go all the way ourselves. Hey, listen, listen. Do you think Peter was a bad man? Peter wasn't a bad man. He was the apostle that the Holy Ghost filled, but he didn't get filled till he repented from cussing. He cussed more than any preacher in the Bible. But when he really got right with God, God filled him with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. Amen. There ain't a lot of folk ain't got a religious spirit. They ain't never been drunk. They, don't, they ain't never shacked up. They ain't never done nothing wrong in their eyes. But they're religious and lost and on their way to hell. And if they don't get, hey, bless God, I believe it'd do some church folk good to cuss. Maybe they'd understand they are wicked. Somebody say amen. We got to have the Lord to help us. We got to have the Lord to help us. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? If you want the power of the Holy Ghost in this church, uh, we got to get every sin out of our heart. We got to get every weight out of our heart. We got to get it all clean before God. And if you won't let him clean it all out, my friend, he'll not come in any at all. He'll not fill you if you don't let the Holy Ghost clean you out. Amen. Your body will be sick. My friend, God won't, God the Holy Ghost won't move. Listen to me. Can I just say this? The people that God will use the most is the people that will have to do the most repenting. 
Somebody say amen. That's the reason some of you ought to hurry up and get down here quick. Amen. I'm telling you, the ones that will repent, you see, we've got to consider it. My friend, the Lord uh, don't always build up our self-esteem. Uh, he gets in our heart and twists that word uh, and shows us how black sin is and how good he is. It ain't about coming to church and feeling good. Uh, it's about coming to church and receiving a word of faith. Somebody say amen. But there's a cost to remember. There's a consideration to rebuke, but number three, there is a cost of reconciliation. You see, me and my wife has not always agreed. You wouldn't believe that, would you? And sometimes we have an exchange of ideas. Isn't that a good way of wording? We have an exchange of thought that is different. Sometimes it is followed by sign language. And the fact of the matter is, at the end of the day, if we're going to have a marriage that continues, there has to be some reconciliation. We have to realize there's a price to pay. Now listen, would it not be foolish for a man been married 35 years, been with the same woman since he was 11, buried at 19, and I'm 54, would I not be a fool to swap my house and my car and my wife and my kids for some other fool that will leave me in six months? Now that woman I've been with all them years has seen me at my best and my worst, and she loves me in spite of it. Listen to me. I've been in this ministry a long time. And I'm telling you, every once in a while, you just have to hold the corn so close to the stalk that it nearly rattles it to the root. Amen? And my friend, you don't do that out of hate. You do that out of love. Nine times out of ten, we don't even realize what's in our heart until it shows up. We've built up resentment. We've choked it down and we hadn't dealt with it. A man, ain't that right? A man just don't get up one day and decide to leave his wife and four kids. No, there's been a problem of brewing a long time. Man, don't come to church on Sunday morning. I've had people come to me, walk into church, look at me, say, Preach, I'm going to leave and I ain't never going to come back. Well, they didn't make up their mind that morning. They'd been hunting an excuse for years. Or months or weeks. Now you say, now what's all that about? The flesh. Listen to me. I don't mean to be ugly. You listen to me. I'm telling you, when the Lord saves you and gives you a mom and a daddy, they're your mom and daddy for life. When God gives you a spiritual father, he's your spiritual father for life. Now, Miss Kim loved me, and she does love me, but her spiritual father was Brother Johnny. He had been with her for years and suffered with her, and I was not a bit jealous of that. Now, she's never told me that, but she loved him. There's nothing wrong with that. I got people all across this country. They have a pastor, and they have a church, but somehow or the other, I'm their spiritual father, and when they need somebody to talk to, they call me. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing to be jealous of. What I'm telling you is we got a God in heaven, and he wants all of us to be the Depended on him. I'm going to just let you in on something. The closer you get to God, you don't want me to say this, do you? Look at your neighbor and say, I don't know if I can take this or not. The closer you get to God, Brother Emmett, the closer you get to the devil. Man, Brother David, can I say that again? The closer you get to God, the closer you get to the devil. Because if you are no threat to his kingdom and his work, and right before a miracle in your life, the devil tries to separate you from your spiritual authority and where God has planted you and where God has put you and the authority he has your life under. 
Amen. Now, say, preacher, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say we're all people. We're all people of flesh. And we're all people of feelings. But we have to walk by faith and not by sight. And we have to realize if we do anything for God, you know, every once in a while, every once in a while, God will offend us. How many know sometimes God will offend you? Do you, you know what these folks up here that's been with me all these years found out? Now, they all love each other, but you know what they found out? I'll tell you what they found out. They found out if they don't stay close to God, they'll be a heathen like they used to be. See, now they got an easy reminder of that. Now, they're over it. And the way we'll know they're over it is they'll go and live their life and be at peace and love and get along and mature and we'll grow. How many know sometimes that every business, how many times have you ever hired somebody and fired them, hired them back? How many? Say that one more time. It's a five-syllable word several times, more than two or twice. <laughs> now, why did you hire them back? Because what? You knew that's going to do better. What about? Hmm. Do you mean to tell me that after all these years, years, Kelly, that the guys that y'all have had the fire, you really thought in your mind that they had learned by their failure, and they had learned how to be a team player, and they had learned how to do what they were told by the one that wrote their check. Now, do you know how you can tell if they didn't learn? <laughs> they get fired again. <laughs> Grandma fires them again. Amen. Amen. Do you know how many times in our life we come to the Lord and we say, Now, Lord, I ain't never going to do this no more. I ain't never going to act this way. Hey, listen to me. I've had to go home from preaching and repent because somewhere in the sermon I'd get in the flesh and not stay in the spirit and the Holy Ghost would convict me about that. Because it wasn't what I said, I wasn't in the Holy Ghost when I said it. And the Holy Spirit dealt with me. So you don't, when you correct a child, when you whip it, it's with love. But when you beat it, it's out of anger. God don't beat his youngins, he corrects us. Somebody say Amen. God don't beat his youngins. He corrects us. Why? God, God told us. Why? To do better. He loves you. Every one of these children are blessed because of the heritage of this little lady sitting right here. Their families are blessed. Is that not right? They all have a job today and have nice homes and automobiles. And there's children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren that are living on the benefit of this lady and her husband. Were they perfect? No. Can I tell you today? Listen to me. There will be others all the way around us, Brother Vance, if we'll all remember. God, this is all about you. Sometimes I get short-sighted. Sometimes I forget. Sometimes we forget. Sometimes you forget. Sometimes we're just too harsh. And then I'll give us the benefit of that. How many knows before we leave today, I ought to say something kind to you. I ought to say something nice before we leave. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to be. I mean, I mean, I don't want to be. I mean, I don't want to be too kind. But let me just say this. <laughs> Did you know that the Lord knew, the Lord knew what kind of people that we were when he saved us? And he saved us anyway? I don't understand how God can look at a prophet and say, go to the land of idolatry and marry a woman of bad reputation. Allow her to have three illegitimate children and you raise all of the children and then you take every dime you have in the bank, Hosea. 
you mortgage everything you have. And when you should have let her go, you mortgage it all and buy her back off of the slave market of sin for the price of a slave and a harlot for 30 pieces of silver. I don't understand how God could do that in Hosea's heart, but I don't understand how he does that in his heart. With the times I failed him, can I be honest with you? I've done more wrong after I was saved than I did before I was saved. See, I was a child when the Lord saved me, Brother Ron. I was seven. I was seven years old, Brother Hill. I was just a young one when the Lord saved me. The wrong I done in my life, I done after I was saved. But you know, he loved me in spite of it. And he never let me buy with it. That's how I know I'm a son of God, Danny. Because every time I do wrong, the Holy Ghost said, you're wrong and you need to repent. Ain't that right, Alicia? You may not believe it, but I can even think something wrong. I mean, I can get upset and I say to myself, well, I'm just going to tell them off. And the Holy Ghost said, about what? You're sorrier than they are. I say, Lord, don't testify for me. But you see, but Lord, I say, Lord, but look what they've done. And he said, yeah, but look what you've done that they don't nobody know about. I said, but Lord, in the light of that, I believe I'll forgive him. And Lord, while we're, in, <laughs> while we're in the forgiving business, boy, I like this, Jason. While I'm in the forgiving business, Lord, I'm glad for that verse. You said you forget it. It's one that will be forgive, but it's better to forget. Forgive and forget. Now, did you get all my points today? You was praying. Well, I'll give them to you quickly, and I'm done. I'll go them quick. Here they are. My friend, if you go and buy that cross, here they are. Write them down. A cross to remember. A consideration to rebuke. And a cost to reconcile. Can I just tell you God pays? His bills on time. How many believes that Galatians 6 is in the Bible? You believe that, Brother Gentry? The Bible said, For whatsoever a man soweth, that. Eighteen months ago, I was in Lowe's, the store that God gave to men. And in Salisbury, in the bank right in front of Lowe's, had an ATM machine, and a lady had went through, and I was right behind her. And this lady had left her ATM card in the machine. Now, that's dangerous. I didn't know the lady. She had already pulled out. And Brother Toby, I reached up and got her card, put it in my pocket. And I had it that Saturday and that Sunday and that next Monday morning. I went to the bank, walked in, and told the people I didn't know. I said, listen. Someone in front of me left their ATM card. I didn't want somebody else to get it and run it credit and get all these people's money and mess their checking account up. And here's their card, and I give them my calling card from the church. It had my name on it. And I said, if they have any questions, tell them to call me, but here's their card. And that lady thanked me, and she got on the phone and called them. That's been a year and a half ago. I'm talking about for whatsoever a man sow it, that shall he also reap. When you think God ain't thinking about you, he is. Last week, I was up at 6 o'clock at the hospital and was at Rowan. Then I had to go to Charlotte, and I was making a lap to Huntersville and going to all these places. And I went through the drive through in Landis, where I bank. When I went through the drive through I put my card in the ATM machine because I knew you can't get out of the parking lots at hospitals if you don't have cash money. So I went through there and was going to get some cash money out. My cell phone rung, as it usually does, every 15 minutes. I answered my phone, and I forgot and left my ATM card in the machine. I come home. I went to the hospital, gone all day long. The next day, I was somewhere um, in Salisbury buying something. I reached in my pocket to get my debit card, and I didn't have it, and I had to put it on my Discover card. And I knew right then I had lost my ATM card. 
And I mean, that worried me. I mean, it worried me. Not that I have that much, but I'm telling you, what I have I've sweated for, and I thank God for it, and I don't want to lose it by foolishness. Somebody say amen. And I come down the road, and I said, Lord, you know where that's at, and I don't know how to. And about that, I said, I'm just going to call the bank, tell them to put a hold on it. I picked up the phone and called the bank, and the bank president said, Hey, preacher, we just called your church. He said, You did? Yes, yeah, we've been trying to get in touch with you. Said, A man come in our bank about an hour ago and laid your ATM card on the desk and said the other morning, early, he come through the, the drive through line and evidently you was in front of him and he was the next customer and you left your card and he took the card. The bank wasn't open. He worked all day. He didn't get out of work till 9 o'clock that night. But he brought it by today because he didn't want somebody to get your money and mistreat you. I had forgot all about what happened 18 months earlier. And last night, or not before last, I was riding down the road to preach in Shelby, North Carolina, at East Shelby Church of God in camp meeting. And as I began to ride down the road, the Holy Ghost jogged my memory. And he said, I just want to remind you tonight I know you're tired. I know you give out. But I want to give you something to say tonight when you get up in front of them people. You tell them that I'm God 18 months ago and that I'm God today and I'll be God tomorrow. I hadn't got behind. I hadn't got ahead. I'm right on time. And when you don't even realize, when you don't even realize, when you don't even realize that I'm working, I'm still in charge of all this stuff. And you know what I said? Thank you, Lord, for the sermon to put in my soul tonight. God said, I got this, son. Hey, listen, 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 listen. You may be here today and say, preacher, I've, I went through a struggle this week and I've had some trying times this week and I've had a hard time this week. And uh, I've had some thoughts like that. And I've had some misgivings and some struggles. And sometimes I just don't know what to do or where to go. Let me just say this today. The only place to go, not the best, but the only place to go is Jesus. That's the only place to go. When you got a problem, when you got a care, when you got a heartache, hey, bring it to Jesus. See, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Give me a C. Let me see if this is right. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Let's stand our feet this morning. For thou art the potter. I am the clay. need maybe you got a burden but you come today have thine own way Lord have thine own way why don't you come today say Lord help me hold door my being 
somebody by the hand this morning and say let's go pray the Lord will help us get somebody by the hand this morning let's come to this altar of prayer and say Lord Lord help me today Lord help our church today help me God to ever be in that place you want me to be amen let's just let God have his way amen appreciate these young men women Appreciate you. Oh, yes, we got to have him. If, if you don't know the Lord as your Savior, would you just trust him this morning? Just say, Father, come into my heart and save me right now. In Jesus' name. Come on now. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. Thy own will While I am waiting Yielded and still Have thine own way Try me, Master, I pray. Let me be filled with thy spirit till all shall see Christ come to you this morning in Jesus' name, and we're grateful for love and, and grace and mercy. Lord, we thank you for, our, for your people. God, we're the sheep of your pasture. God, we're the work of your hands. Lord, I ask you, God, today as the pastor of this church, Lord, you'll forgive me where I failed you. And Lord, you'll forgive us where we have all failed. God, I pray we'll be reminded for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Lord, today, Lord, we've, we've learned from your word. We've learned from our experience. We've learned, dear God, what our own heart is capable of. And Lord, we know now what you're capable of. Lord, you're able to help us to be a mighty church, mighty to save mighty to heal, mighty God to bring glory. Lord, I know in my heart this church is on the verge of a miracle. Lord, we're going to build this next building. Lord, we're going to have finances, God, that we'll be able to 
do the work of the Lord with. God, I know in my heart, I've seen it, I dream about it. Lord, you know what you put in my heart. There hadn't been a week went by for months that I hadn't dreamed. Uh, God, even in the night, and Lord, seen a vision in the day of what you're doing in this place. And God, I thank you for that. And God, I pray you continue to help us for all of us to just be in that little place that you want us to be. Help me, God, never to be seen. But Lord, help Jesus to be seen and Lord, we do love you today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. You can be seated for count usher as you come. Then Pastor Jeremy come make our announcements for the day. And... Uh, us as you come, Brother Mark, you bring the men. If you're visiting with us today, if you're here visiting with us today, on the seat in front of you is a visitor's card. And I ask you here in just a moment, you'll fill that out and uh, put that in the offering plate. And uh, we want a record of your attendance. We're glad to have a lot of you back been on vacation. And we're glad you're here with us today. It's just right now two minutes after 12, just very early in the day, and uh, we're glad you're here with us today. Brother Cordell, did you have a good vacation? Woo. I didn't know if it was your legs or them was your britches. I didn't know. Oh, yeah, I hear you. I thought Martin had rode a chicken when he come to church this morning. But I still love him. Don't you love Martin? I love him. I can be having a good day. Martin Cordell's the only about I've ever met that texts is in tongues. Only about I've ever met. And uh, I have to send it to Dinah and ask her, because she's got the gift of interpretation, to tell me what Martin's trying to tell me. Amen. You understand? How many's got some of them? But I love Brother Martin. Good to see Miss Pam with us this morning. You've been doing good this week, Miss Pam. Amen. We're praying for you. She's taking treatments and going through this cancer process, and, and uh, let's remember that. I got a call last night, late, uh, dear man that taught my uh, young adult Sunday school class and a preacher. Uh, in South Georgia, the first church I pastored 30-some years ago, Brother Mark Patterson, uh, him and Miss Diane, they're at the hospital there in Jacksonville, and they've diagnosed Mark with a very uh, extreme uh, form of cancer, and he is deathly ill. Brother Mark's just a couple years older than I, but he worked with me for years and years and years, and I love Brother Mark. He's a He's been a commercial heat and air conditioning man all his life. And oh, and now, of course, he's been pastoring now for probably 25 years. But uh, let's uh, remember Brother Mark's church, his business, his home, his grown children. They're about like my kids. And uh, we love all of them. So let's pray for Brother Mark Patterson this morning. All right. Brother Jeremy, you come make our announcements while we receive the offering. And uh, then you bring it back, bring the offering back, and we'll bless it, okay? Amen. Give the days on the Lord. Amen. I may have enjoyed service today. Would you say amen? Come on, you can, give the, you can do a little bit better than that. Amen, somebody. Amen. The Lord is good all the time. And all the time, he's good. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't forget about the Operation Christmas Child Gift Collection this month, June is the child scissors, safety scissors, so as you're out, pick up some of those. July 1st, directly following the Sunday morning service, we're going to have a VBS volunteers lunch. So if you signed up to be a volunteer, are we still accepting volunteers? Still need a lot of volunteers? As many as we can get. So uh, we always need more volunteers. So if you can come and uh, if you want to sign up, see Sister Michaela uh, today, today. Everybody heard that today. 
see Sister Michaela and sign up to be a volunteer for VBS. But we're going to have a lunch directly following uh, July 1st service. Um, and um, we'll uh, answer any questions that you have. Uh, she'll probably hand out assignments at that point and uh, to let you know what, what's, uh, what's going on. Wednesday, July 4th, put it in your calendar. Wednesday is July 4th. It should have the little dot to tell you that it's July 4th, next, this coming next Wednesday, amen. Uh, we're going to have the fireworks Independence Day celebration here at the church, so we want everybody to come out. The youth is going to have a fundraiser. They usually sell hot dogs, hamburgers. Are we doing ice cream this year? Preacher, are we doing ice cream this year? Uh, July, amen. <laughs> he don't even know what I asked him. But uh, uh, ice cream and watermelons, Amen. So we're going to have ice cream, watermelons, hot dogs. It starts uh, usually usually about 6, 6.30. And then, and then the fireworks are going to go off when it gets dark. Amen. If you try, if you try to shoot off fireworks in the day, there's no point. Amen. <laughs> You'll just see a bunch of smoke. But, uh, but yeah, the youth is going to take care of concessions. Um, and... Um, so be here for that. Um, youth pool party is going to be July 8th, uh, ages 5 and up. Uh, more info coming on that. Saturday, July 28th, uh, the work day uh, for, for VBS. That's going to be the VBS work day, the 28th. Uh, yes, sir. Brother Mark. Go ahead. Amen. How many of you know sometimes it's not always everybody else, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need. Amen. Amen. I, I, I'm, I'm more assured today that the Lord is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. Amen. According to the power that he's put in us. And when that power begins to work in us, he will begin to strengthen us. He'll begin to change us and strengthen us. He'll begin to grow us. Amen. How many of you remember your children when they were very young, crying and whining, and you ask the doctor what's going on with them? They say, well, it's just growing pains. They're in pain because they're growing. Amen. We're always growing, church. Amen. There's going to be pains along the way, but God has given us grace sufficient for the hour. Amen. Praise God, somebody. Come on, praise the Lord. It's always all right to praise the Lord. And I thank God for all that he's done for us in our midst today. That's all the announcements I have. Six o'clock tonight, service time. We're going to pray over the offering. Amen. Heavenly Father, God, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus, and we ask for every gift that's been given. Father, we pray right now that you would bless the assignment, God. Today we give our seed and our offering an assignment. God, that today you would begin to build the house of God in this place. God, that you would extend the bounds of this ministry, Father. And God, we have, we have already stated that we are looking unto you to see that building come to fruition. And today, Father, God, this is just a portion. And God, we thank every person that's give, every person that didn't have to give. We pray that you'd bless them. God, right now in Jesus' name, God, I pray that you begin to multiply this. God, as you break it in your hands, God, begin to bless it and multiply it that we might see the lost saved, God, and those that are broken put back together again. God, and we'll give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hug somebody's neck. Put your hand up like this. <laughs> 